Hey everyone, it's time for the second installment of my online guide to Dark Souls. If you haven't seen the first one, go ahead and check it out. I talk about the Covenants, but if you already know all about the Covenants, don't worry about it then, because I'm just doing a brief intro. Anyway, so here is the online interactions of Dark Souls. So a little rundown. I'm going to be really just going over PvP and how that works. Co-op is self-explanatory. You summon someone into your game and you kill a boss. Or the NPCs, if you wish. Anyways, so, um, this is just a quick little fight that I had. Had a pretty cute little riposta. Not really sure if cute's the uh, correct terminology for that kill, but it was badass. Anyways, so, uh, kicking it off, um, there's a couple rules and things that go by for PvP that, uh, I'm, I'll be ex explaining, and I'll be going over it as well as builds, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so the jack of all trades, or as I like to call... The masters of nothing. Jack of all trades is really uh things all all you have to really know about them is that they just don't simply specialize in one possible thing. Um, I have this guy at a dark wraith plus two simply because I like PvP, the idea of it. This was my first character, by the way. I I, I typically think most people's first characters will be a jack of all trades, just because you want to be able to taste this game in so many different flavors. But yeah, as you can see, he can use both uh, sunlight blade as well as he can use crystal magic weapon his dex is fairly high you know his vitality is whatever it's really nothing special but they're nice all right so this is an invasion i did on my jack of all trades character something that i should warn you about is that they well personally you're probably going to see me die here i don't remember if i do die in this clip or not I just, the jack of all trades being that PvP isn't necessarily their high point, you know, it's it's sometimes kind of hard. Um, currently I'm using the Ricard's Rapier as well as uh, the Grass uh, Crest Shield. Now keep in mind, there is one, there, there's, uh, about jack of all trades characters is it's really just what you make them. I, I was just showing this guy off simply just because this is what mine turned out to be. It was a dex build, and well, it, it originally started to be a dex build when I started the game because I looked up a lot about this game and how you know character creation worked, which is essentially why I got it in the first place. And uh, I, you know, I I found out you know I was like, hey, dex build is kind of more my play. I'm not really one to be a big you know hunk of metal walking around, so I'm gonna be a dex build, and I thought it'd be fast. Well, then I figured out about these things that are like crystal magic weapon and sunlight blade. I was like, oh my god, I want those. Well, yeah, eh, you know, they're very helpful, but then it also kind of took away from the overall um, play of how it works. All right, this right here is my strength build. Um, what I'll be doing with this character um, is I'll be, I'll, do, I'll be doing a couple fights. I'll be doing, you know, a little bit of uh, smashing and crashing with this guy. But uh, anyway, so getting into the strength build. What these guys excel with is, as you could probably tell, strength-oriented weapons. Which essentially are just your big, like, clubs and, you know... If you envision yourself as the Hawk, this is your build. Okay, so as you can see right here, I have him as a Dark Moon Blade. Um, simply because it's just another means of PvP. Vitality isn't that great, however, I do recommend a good strength builds vitality to be at least 50, as well as strength. But uh, I would wanted my faith on this character specifically to be 30 because I wanted to be able to use the grant effectively, or one hand the grant at least. And um, I'm actually uh, I'm pretty happy with that. But I, ha I have my guy um, not lumped up with a bunch of armor like typical strength builds do. Simply, yeah, simply because I, I just, I don't know, I can't handle being slow. It's not my thing. But uh, yeah, so uh, I use typically use Dark Moon Blade and uh, the big club, and it works out pretty swell for me. All right, so you can see right here I'm on my strength build. And <coughs> a little bit of background story on the strength build. Now, I lose this fight because simply the strength build is just not my build. You know, I I, I definitely uh, I succeed better with other builds, and I think that's something that makes this game really awesome is that, 
you know, you can be bad at some, you can be good at some, you can be good at all if you choose to be. Um, but strength build, I just don't really like the style of it, so I typically try to stay away. Anyway, so this is what I call the anatomy of the battle. I will explain good things, pros and cons about the class, and these are just, remember, just from, like, my own, my own eyes. It's not, uh, expl it's not, like, this doesn't apply to all. So as you can see right here, I'm using Dark Moonblade Great Club. And I just took a, took a whopping 534 chunk out of him. That's what strength builds excel at. They can do crazy damage, and that's good. Um, but that's at the expense of their movement, which why having a good shield is will kind of make up for it. As I see right here, I'm using the Sunlight Shield. Now I went for the parry right there, and he simply went for the backstab. There's not really not much I could have done there. I don't think anyone could have really done much there, but... Um, people will go straight for your back for your back when you're a strength build just because you're technically slower and that kind of gets you screwed over. Another thing that screwed me over right there was the fact that I was trying to roll. When you're a strength build and you are your equipment load is not that great, like you're just you're not gonna exceed that much. Um, roll or at least you're not gonna be that much successful on a roll. They're just they're slow. All right, so here we have the Dex build. Dexterity, this is kind of more my type. However, if you're going to go just straight up dexterity, it's a little bit harder, in my opinion, to play. But uh, if you like the challenge, it's, um, it, you know, just I think if, if any, uh, you know, class is hard for you to play as, you know, going for the challenge, I think, is always a good thing to do. But um, equipped it on my dex build, he is has 50 dexterity. 36 endurance and 50 vitality. Those are the only three real, um, uh, three only three real skills that you have to go after. Right now, I have equipped a life hunt scythe, which I need to upgrade again, and then a uh, Ricard's rapier. Um, as you saw previously in my uh, Jote video, Jack of All Trades, um, I use the Ricard's rapier just simply because I like the weapon. Alright, so here is a fight from my dex build. Um, I'm currently going to be fighting a strength build. I don't actually remember if I win this fight or not. But um, proper etiquette right here is the bow before the fight. That's how you know you're going to get an honorable duel where no one's going to give you any bullshit. So, dexterity. Um, these guys, uh, I, people that I'm fighting right now, the slower types, and also, even better, two-handing a weapon my favorite type of people to fight just because they don't have anything to protect themselves other than if they block with their weapon which when people are two-handing most people don't really do um, so I can do this running attack that um, lets me uh, get a nice little quick jab in and uh, it typically hits for the most part which I'm pretty happy right now I'm trying to uh, riposta this guy because um, I use the hornet's ring and I'm doing my running thing right there you know, get to land a little hit on him. But uh, a lot of people actually have been saying the Hornet's Ring is a cheap thing to do. I hope you understand that, you know, the Hornet's Ring is simply... I, I use it mainly for... I, or I try to use it mainly for repostas, but you don't see me go ahead and backstab fishing people, which is considered a dick move. And if you don't know what that is, that's basically where you just run... You keep running and trying to get the back side of people and backstabbing them. There is a difference between reposting and backstab, or I mean, backstab fishing and backstab punishing. Fishing is where you only go for the back, and then a punish is where if they do something, they will uh, suffer for it. You can get a free backstab on them. Now that was a pretty sweet reposte right there, which is where if you have a medium type shield like my blood shield, um, you can press the left trigger or R2 and get a nice little critical to the stomach. All right, so here we have the faith build. He is in the top three of my favorite builds of all time, simply because I like the use of like magic, fire, and miracles and stuff like that. Um, I kind of sculpted him to look like Paladin Leroy, as you can see right here, and then I also use the non-cursed version of the Great Sword of Artorias, simply because it has a B scaling with faith, which is awesome. So in the stats, um, I have 35 vitality, 30 endurance, um, 50 faith, and then everything else <coughs> kind of pretty much normal besides a little bit thrown into intelligence i'm not really sure could have really used that for uh, vitality either way um that's my build this is my good faith build i have another faith build which is my bad faith build and he has 50 uh vitality and a 50 um 
faith as well. And by good and bad, I mean one uses uh, divine stuff, the other one uses a cult. All right, so the faith build. Um, this is uh, on my good faith character. And uh, so this guy, he's going to be pulling out a Sunlight Blade, which uh, I could have done as well, but I figured I'm going to go with the uh, Great Sword of Artorius as well as the Occult Claymore. But I, I like using the Shotel with Sunlight Blade, even though some may consider it a dick move. Um, so yeah, um, him, he's using a katana right here. I'm, I don't know, something about me. I'm just, for some reason, I don't know why, just not a fan of katanas. Um, I'm using my Claymore. Uh, Claymore is a very prevalent weapon um, in the Dark Souls PvP series just because it has a pretty nice uh, move set, but it doesn't really excel at either dex or strength. And uh, so, yeah. Now, something uh, that faith builds have, as you can see right there, that was Wrath of the Gods. Um, Wrath of the Gods, some people call it a dick move. It's only a dick move if you spam it like a motherfucker. And uh, something I like about the Claymore right there, um, as you can see, when it when you roll and then attack, it does this like little poking move. But uh, he was going for a great uh, sunlight spear, and uh, I popped him with another Wrath of the Gods. And that was the only one that I landed on him in the fight. Um... You can keep people uh, mixed up and guessing uh, with miracles such as Wrath of the Gods or maybe a Great Lord's Sword Dance, something like that. Alright guys, so we're about halfway through the video. And a common question amongst new PvPers is, what's the best weapon for me? Now, there's plenty of weapons in the game, and there's a lot of things that affects weapons. You can do an elemental upgrade, a normal uh, standard upgrade. You know, there's so many weapons in the game right here. So many uh, weapons that are affected by different stats, skills, and how they're built. Um, yeah, as you can see, I'm going down the list right here. <coughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, so you could get, there's the fire upgrade, the magic up upgrade, there's the enchanted upgrade, there's the uh, chaos fire upgrade, there is the crystal upgrade, there is the, um, I'm drawing a huge brain fart right here, the called upgrade the divine upgrade there's so many upgrades in the game now what's the best weapon though is it the moonlight greatsword which i am currently using right now maybe maybe it could be it has excellent stun locking ability it uh, has a great move set and has a really badass um special as you can see right here i'm just kind of showing you uh the overall move set of the moonlight greatsword um this is my favorite weapon and there's, uh, as you can see, the special. I like it a lot. It has a great move set and it just does a lot of great damage. But oh, there's the stats. What's that? Zero physical. All magic damage. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was just uh, really just cutting up um, the Moonlight Greatsword to be something really amazing than it really is. But simply, it's just. There's no such thing as the best weapon to use in the game. The, this game is so incredibly um, diverse that. Really, it's just what the player's up to. Now, I can give you some strong recommendations. I recommend that you use, um, find a weapon, find a weapon that first that you think looks cool, has a cool, you know, just something you maybe could find yourself liking, and then test out the move set of it. How you test out the move set is you can do running attacks, you can do R um R one attacks, R two attacks, um, R B R T attacks. You can do rolling attacks. You just have to figure out, find the move set, something that can put you in the groove. Now, as you can see right here, I'm using the Enchanted Pike. Simply, I like it because it has a nice range as well as it does this weird, uh, I'll show it to you right here, this uh, sprinting um, move. Uh, I do a backflip and it just does like a rhino charge thing, which catches people from a pretty far distance. They normally don't see that attack. And that's simply just why I use the pike because that has that special little move. Um, Guys, move set over damage every single time. And there's, um, it. You could have a weapon that could do the most damage in the game of all time, but that's not going to compare at all any if you can't like if the way it swings, the way it works, the way it jabs just doesn't work well for you. Now here I'm using the Chandler's Trident, and uh, it has pretty nice um has some pretty nice uh, stats for it as far as killing people, but also does this nice little dancing move. Um, that's one of the dan the dancing move. It was simply why I like it. Um, just you have to find something that works for you. There's no such thing as the best weapon in the game because there's so many weapons that do so many different things. And uh, yeah, so that is the best weapon. All right, so back from the uh, best weapon, I wanted to talk about um, 
Also, uh, my voice may sound a little bit better. The quality might sound better because I actually just recently made a purchase of the Blue Snowball uh, microphone. Pretty cool microphone. Product placement, da da da. Um, not, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. This is the Pyromancer. Um, one of my favorite builds. These guys specialize in obviously pyromancies, fire-oriented things. But they, you know, uh, they obviously. In the pyromancy spectrum, there's some other things such as like uh, the mist pyromancies and things like that. And uh, but yeah, one thing that I like to do for my uh, pyromancer is I will um, I'll have two pyromancy uh, hands. I'll have one that's dedicated to actually using pyromancies, and then I'll have one that's dedicated strictly just for um, power within. Something that increases your damage by 40%, which is really cool. A nice little buff. And, uh, but yeah, I, I typically try to rock Quailex Fury Sword and the Silver Knight Spear, but that's my Pyromancer. Hope you guys enjoy. One of my favorite builds. Alright, so uh, here is the anatomy version of the Pyromancer. Also, um, if you didn't notice this from before, yes, he's got a huge egg on his head. That's, uh, the, I like to call my Pyromancer my egghead build because not too many people do this. And uh, so this guy right here, it may be probably the one of the dumbest Dark, Soul, Dark Souls people I've ever killed in this game. He simply is just letting me wail on him with fireballs um this is by no means like me trying to show you skill or anything i'll be straight honest about it this guy was just i don't know if he was just retarded or something i'm not really sure but either way uh sorry um i kind of have a bit of a cold right now so if i sound kind of bad <coughs> but either way so um what some things that uh pyromancers are really ex um I, I i like a lot is uh using the mist like toxic mist, poison mist, acid surge, things like that. What they do is uh, people don't typically see them as really useful at all because, and they're not really supposed to meant to like do what they're supposed to do, and that's poison people, kind of like I did this dumb guy right here. Um, what they're really good is uh, smart players will probably back away from them. And uh, if you're like in a enclosed areas, you can like block off areas. Yeah, you know, give yourself kind of the advantage, even hide in it if you need protection in your own mist, which are really nice for um, you know defensive and offensive purposes. Now, right here, I was just kind of being an asshole and letting him like poison out, <clears throat> but he decides to pull out some uh, pyromancies of his own. I could have used power within and just went crazy on him, but I noticed he was gonna do another. Um, uh, chaos uh, fireball so I was like alright I'm gonna backstab punish you which is totally fine um, back chain backstabbing and backstab fishing I don't approve of but that's just when you catch someone off guard I hope you guys like the pyromancer alright so one of the um, final builds that I want to talk about today is the mage build um, this is one of my most successful builds I've done with I would say as far as successfulness probably my mage is uh, I, I guess if you were to give him a win to loss ratio my I do probably best with my mage um things i go for is obviously 50 vi um, vitality typically just my own personal um level set of vitality to go to and then 50 intelligence weapons that <coughs> wow god weapons i use is uh velka's rapier because it does really awesome for um pvp just that and that's just for me just because it scales with intelligence and has a nice little poke with it um, some spells that I use are, you know, just crystal spells, soul spear, and, you know, crystal magic weapon and things like that. Um, <clears throat> however, for your main weapon, I recommend this to all, anyone who wants to try out a mage. Um, the Moonlight Greatsword is a really great weapon. It has some nice, it, it does some nice chipping damage towards shields. It can break poise pretty easily. Um, it stun locks really well, but I don't, I don't know, stun locking just in general isn't totally my thing. But, um, I, yeah, I typically roll with Velka's Rapier, Moonlight Greatsword, um, then the, uh, Magic Crossbow. Alright, so here's the anatomy battle for the mage, um, trust me, and just, just like all of my other anatomy battles, I've had better battles, but, you know, this was the best one I had at, during this time. This few short of time I had to uh, record for this video, um, so I'm sorry if everything wasn't perfect, but uh, you know I did my best. So starting out from it, um, <clears throat> I was trying to get a little uh, combo homing crystal soul mass move, and uh, the moonlight great sword um, has that great move set where if you run at it and don't do that spinning attack. I tried for the magic attack right there, didn't really exactly go the way I wanted it to, but that's fine. So I went out for um, the um, 
the light crossbow, but then he backstab punished me because the crossbow has a reload time on it. And, uh, you know, he got a really nice backstab in for that. So the Moonlight Greatsword has a great chipping ability. I knew I could get through his shield right there and be able to get that extra hit in. Um, his weapon was faster, so he thought he could get it, but, you know, I beat him to it. Either way, that was a great match. I'm not really sure why I was shooting at the ground. Um, I don't know. Maybe I was <clears throat> had a bad day at PvP. I don't know. And I was being a dick. <laughs> but you should bow um, to people after you kill them. That's a more respectful thing to do. All right, the final build that I'm going to be going over today are uh, the cosplay builds. Now, a cosplay build is, uh, well, in essence, cosplay means to kind of uh, take the look or, I guess, model yourself off of um, something like a comic book character or... And it doesn't even have to be comic books or anything video game related or anything like that. Just like modeling yourself off of a fictional character. In this case, I modeled this build off of uh, Thor, the god of thunder. I'm a big nerd for Thor. You know, even well way before Avengers or anything like that or the Thor movie came out. I just, I'm, I've always been a Thor nerd. So this is my Thor cosplay build that's in, um, in practice or in the process of being made. And um, yeah, so, but a cosplay build, I didn't give any... Um, I, I didn't give any extra video for this because, you know, a cosplay build can be anything. This is just my own personal build.